commercial breweries, craft and big major breweries, uh, sometimes don't have the time to carbonate their beer in bottles like most of us craft brewers do. And as such, they had to come up with another method to carbonate their beer so they could get it out into production fast. Well, what they do is an inline carbonation. And what that is, is running the beer through a carbonation apparatus that will introduce uh, CO2 into the beer. They can put it right in their bottles. It's already fully carbonated, ready to drink. Well, as home brewers, there are other methods that we can use to do much the same thing. Uh, when we put beer into kegs, we can force carbonate it by turning the pressure up on our CO2 tank and rock it back and forth and uh, do that for 10 or 15 minutes, let it sit for a day or so, and it gets somewhat carbonated. It's not accurate, but it works. Uh, typically what brewers at home will do is just set the CO2 tank at whatever uh, pressure they need to to get at whatever carbonation level they want their beer to be and let it sit for a week or so and it'll carbonate naturally from the CO2 tank and just eventually be good. Well, what I'm going to do is build an apparatus similar to what a big brewery uses that'll work for a home brewer. Now, it'll allow me to carbonate a keg in somewhere around an hour, uh, which is a whole lot faster than 24 hours, and the keg will be perfectly drinkable after about an hour or an hour and a half. Anyway, let me show you what kind of equipment I have that I'm going to use to build this. Over here, on this table here, is everything I'm going to need. And I will uh, go through all these pieces of equipment and let you know what they're all for. First of all, over to the right here is a pump. Now, what the pump is going to be used for, in conjunction with either the pin lock or ball lock connector, is it's going to take the beer out of the keg, which is over here to the left, and run it through the carbonation device and then put it right back into the keg. And what it's going to do is recirculate the beer over and over and over over the period of about an hour and infuse CO2 into the beer and get it nicely carbonated. Now I haven't got this thing put together yet. Uh, I've just done some preliminary stuff. If you look at the pump here, I've got an in cable and an out uh, in tube and an out tube. Uh, at some point I've got to cut the out tube in half and uh, let's see the out tube is the one on the top here this one in my hand here uh, the end tube is going to take beer from the bottom of the keg from the dip tube uh, the out tube will put the beer back in the keg through the port that's normally used for gas uh, what i will do is i'm going to cut this right about here and i'm going to put this little thing in the middle of it now let me take this thing apart it's just Basically a couple, a uh, half inch to, I believe these are three eighth inch fittings, which will fit inside the, tu the tube there. It's a standard stainless steel T. Uh, nothing really special about that. It's uh, just again a half inch stainless steel T. The main thing, and the thing that makes it all possible, is this little fitting right here. This is an aeration stone. Now this particular one is, I believe, uh, two microns, the holes are. Uh, you can get them anywhere from point half a micron, or from half a micron on up, but two microns is how they sell these. And if you look, it's built right in to this half inch fitting with a hose barb on the outside. And I've already stuck a hose on it, don't have a hose clamp on it yet. But uh, this, that's the money part right there. Uh, now let me quickly, speaking of money, go over what it's cost me to do this. Uh, I think I paid $16 for the pump shipped from eBay. Uh, 10 or $11 for the carbonation stone. Uh, the other parts I pretty much had on hand. I think these hose fittings cost a couple bucks a piece. Um, I have actually ordered some stainless steel hose fittings, but they're not here yet, and I want to try out the thing, so I'm going to use these. Um, up here, I've got a an air valve, 
which I'm going to use for CO2. And if you notice, I've got a quick connect on this end. On my CO2 tank, I've actually got some quick connects that match that. It's got an on-off valve. Uh, also have another little barbed hose fitting here that I will hook up to the aeration stone hose. Anyway, it's really a pretty straightforward device. Uh, the stone goes in here. And if you look, you can see that it doesn't go all the way down. So I, I'll tighten that up. It'll be just fine. Hose fittings go on the outside. And what will happen is, as I mentioned before, the beer will come out of the keg one way. And it'll head this direction, past this aeration stone. I'll set the pressure on the CO2 to be whatever pressure I need. For my beer to be carbonated uh, properly based on whatever temperature that beer is going to be at and after about an hour of the beer circulating it should be fully carbonated so i'm going to stop right now and get to putting this thing together and i'll come back when it's finished quick update i'm uh, hooking up the carbonation stone onto the tube that's going to go into the CO2 tank and what I'm going to do to get this uh, hose on there since it's snug I'm going to heat it up a little bit Don't need much, it's a pretty hot heat gun. Oops, sorry about that. And get that thing a little bit warm. Push it right on. There we go. Now just tighten down the hose clamp. and snug and there you have it now I'm going to put it on here now you'll notice I did put Teflon tape on all the fittings uh, okay and I'll tighten that up with the crescent wrench, uh, get these two fittings over here on the T, and we'll be ready to hook it up to the pump. For the sake of a quick demo, I'm going to take the carbonation stone and just drop it in this bucket of star sand, and let's see what happens. Works pretty good. Pretty good. Well, I'm all done. Here's the device. If you look, I got an output right here. Input right here. Stone input right here. Now it's all just a matter of putting it to use. I'm doing a quick test of how it works. Now, right now, I've got the pump pumping some star sand, and you'll notice. I got some water coming out here. I've gone ahead and got my CO2 tank over here. And I'm going to open up the CO2 
set it at a pretty low pressure don't want it too high or it'll probably blow this thing out and just put a okay now you hear it was a little bit of a sound difference there if you look if I increase the pressure check out the output here you can see that uh, there are bubbles in there so the stone is pushing some bubbles through I don't want to waste CO2 I'll turn that off and now it's back to clear on we got cloudy CO2 off clear so it looks like it's going to work next step is to try it with some beer which I'll hopefully be able to do in the next day or two the quick carving device is put together right now I am sanitizing it um, what I did, did is I put all three hoses in here I've got the input hose here uh, here's the output hose you can see the sanitizer going through it uh, and then here's my CO2 hose now to get sanitizer through the CO2 hose I'm gonna have to kink this one going out and since it's got the little buff, little holes in the oxygenator stone, carbonator stone, this will push it through the other direction, get it nice and sanitized. Now I'm ready to carbonate my beer. Got a keg right next to it, and you can see that the pump's hanging off of. I'll hook up my fittings, and we'll get started. Everything is sanitized and ready to go. I've got uh, the out uh, side of my keg hooked up to the input side of the pump. Uh, right here, I've got the output side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pump some uh, beer through there to clean out the line. I don't want it going back in the keg. So, the pump's working. And there we got some beer through. That's enough to clean the line out and get any air out. I don't want the oxygen going back in. Now I'm going to put my fitting back on. The gas connector. Snug it up. And kind of see if I can get the air out of this. Okay, now the next step is to add the CO2. Got the CO2 tank right here. And I've got it set at 9 pounds, which uh, based on the chart I looked at, says that's what I need to do to carbonate it. And turned on the pump. And now the carbonation process has begun. Now if you look up here at the, war, the beer coming out of the keg, it's clear. You look at the beer going back into the keg, it's cloudy because of the CO2 being infused into it. Now I'm just going to let this go. And it's going to run for about an hour. And in an hour I should have some carbonated beer. Now what I'm supposed to see, from what I understand is this tube going back in is going to be clearer over time so we'll just let it go and check back in a little while it's been a few minutes still going good a little close-up of the output versus input back into the keg you can see the difference with the milkiness of the bubbles going in with it. Let's see if I can get in there and get it kind of focused. Uh, looking over here, quick shot of what's going on here. Again, the beer goes in the top of the pump, comes out here at the bottom, and into the carbonating stone apparatus. Uh, on the left, uh, horizontal part of the tea that's where the carbonating stone is at it goes in there and 
Uh, you can actually look at the hose here. There's a little bit of backflow, and you can kind of see air being pushed through, or CO2 being pushed through, I should say. Uh, it's a milk stout. According to the carbonation charts I found online, it's supposed to be at about two volumes, um, which means about nine pounds. Uh, for the CO2, which you look there, it's set at about nine pounds. And within an hour, uh, this 36 degree beer, 39 degree beer should be carbonated. I'm really hoping this works well. I'm looking forward to drinking some of this tonight. This system has been carbonating now for about 40 minutes and if you look at the input hose over here it's a lot clearer than it was before which tells me that a lot of CO2 has been absorbed and not much more is getting absorbed one other thing I noticed if I go down here and look at the CO2 tube if you look down at the bottom there there's a little bit of beer that was back flushed in during the clean out process and you can just see that there is CO2 still being pushed into it, but I've noticed that it has gotten slower and slower as far as the way the bubbling is going in. I guess that's kind of a good indication. Uh, with that there, I'm probably just going to keep an eye on it until that slows down to next to nothing, if not nothing, and that'll tell me that... Uh, the CO2 pressure inside the keg has reached equilibrium with the regulator pressure. Alright, it's been going for about an hour now. And if you look, there's no real new pressure going through here that you can see. Uh, both tubes are pretty much the same color, so we must have reached uh, carbon dioxide equilibrium. Uh, pressure is still around 10 pounds. I did turn it up a hair because the wort has, uh, or the beer, has increased in temperature a little bit, but it should be carbonated.